a minute or so. I'm going to be talking to a guy that, if you missed him, well, you missed a lot. We're going to see some of his highlights later on. Take a look at this first. You've got to say, David Walker, that is one hell of a performance. Excellent. Walker swarming all over. Shot by Walker. That dynamite starts to explode. Absolutely amazing. David Walker. He will not give up. He will not give way. the hairs on the back of my neck up. I've had Duke McKenzie pulling at my heartstrings. Now I've had this guy, David Walker, pulling at the memory strings. Dave, welcome to the sofa. It's a delight to have you here. Thanks, Steve. Uh, when you watch stuff like that, you must, uh, well, it must make you feel good. Yeah, it brings back mem memories. I had some tough fights, but I loved it, Steve. You know, it was the best thing I've done, you know, and yeah. Well, we'll talk about what you're doing now, where you've been yeah. since you, la you had your last fight, but we're going to take everybody back to a night in Norwich in, I think it was July... 2003. Southern area like middleweight title is on the line. In one corner there's Kid Dynamite and in the other corner there's the spirit Spencer Field. And this is genuine put your seat belts on TV. Just go and lose a five or six minutes of your life. Sit back, put your feet up, tell anybody else in the house to shut up because you've got to watch this. Take it away. Walker's career seemed to have hit uh, a bit of a trough when he lost to that great warhorse Jimmy Vincent away last December. Jimmy Vincent, the victim of what everybody thought was a pretty uh, iffy decision recently and a challenge for the British title. Oh, what a shot! Oh, great left hand by Farron, right on the bell. Farron thinks he's won it. Walker will have to take the count. Oh, he's taken the eight count and well, he has been saved by the bell. Walker making all the running in that opening round. And had that happened 10 seconds earlier, Walker may well have been gone. Let the right hand slip, and Farron caught him with a fearsome punch. Right at the end of the round, Walker, Farron tried the uppercut. Walker's right hand was nowhere. Farron shortened the punch, and that was the classic left hook joke. Well, I'll tell you what, the minutes break won't be long enough for him. He fell heavily. I mean, it was an absolute peach of a shot. Well, Farron really now fancies this job, and you couldn't blame him. He really got himself caught by a little left from Walker. Walker's timing, understandably, slightly off at this stage. That's better. Midway through the second. Things are just waiting a little bit now, and let's just allow Walker back into the fight. This fight's really starting to take off now. Good, Good work by Walker in and out again. Farron nods the head as if to say, yes, you did get me. This is a good turn round by Walker. He needs to keep that right hand of his up after he throws it, because that's what got him caught in the last one. Walker's just found a home for his own right hand now. You see it come into play again, but Spencer's coming back with his own left hooks. Farron's jab, just a little bit off target. Didn't land with the accuracy that we saw in the opening round. Spencer's just waiting a little bit too long now. This is where he should be using his jab, not looking for that one knockout punch, but trying to set Walker up. He started off the first round brilliantly, but he's not capitalised on it in this round. Just out of the corner of my eye, I saw Mick Hennessy on his feet, shouting instructions at Walker, who was all but gone at the end of the fourth, or the first, I should say. Here he is, right at the end of the second. Good defence by Farron, says you didn't get me. And again, launches that rapier-like jab out. Well, you've got to give Walker a lot of credit. He's got him again! Would you believe it? The 
bell was just about to be sounded, and this is extraordinary. I'm sure exactly the same moment of the second round as the first, and Walker is wobbled again, and he's going to have to do it all again. Talk to me. Are you OK? Put your knees out, put your legs out, put your legs out. You keep standing up, don't you? Look at me, are you OK? Wait, wait. Tell me the truth, because I'm your mate. Well, Mick Williamson tugs his ears, Rob McCracken right? says, look at me. Come on, deep what breath, another deep solid breath. shot he got caught with. Well, would you have you bet any money that this could have happened at exactly the same time at this right at the end of the round, and Walker again was gone. Walker's legs look very unsteady, very shaky. There's nothing coming back. Good right hand by Walker as we speak. Adam Booth and a oh, real cruiserweight prospect, David Hay in the corner. Ryan's fearing have to cover up. Can Walker do what he did to Humphrey? Good short right hand under the chin of Fearon. Fearon's taking it all. A little shrug of the shoulders. Good accurate stuff by Walker. Just about a minute to go. Walker gets him with a left. Well, this is an extraordinary contest. This one's really caught alive now, but you just fear that any time that Spencer Fearon throws that left hook or the right hand, he's going to land flush and the fight will be over. Walker can't afford to get careless, as he did at the end of rounds one and two. Fearon puffing a little bit, I've got to say. Better by Walker, who's been much more active over the past couple of years. Fearon doing a little bit of the stand-up comic bit. He's trying to lure Walker into that uh, left hand. Bit of grazing underneath Walker's left eye. 30 seconds to go. Can Walker get through a round without getting caught? Fearon starting to wobble. I think tiredness is just setting a little bit. Spencer's put so much into these first two rounds. His mouth just dropped wide open. He's taking him big gulps of air. Wonderful shot by Walker. That may settle it. Fearon looks over at Adam Booth. He's so groggy. What a shot by David Walker. He's just about made it. There's seconds to go. I do not believe this. Walker saved by the bell in rounds one and two. And now Spencer Fearon saved by the bell. This has to be one of the most extraordinary contests ever witnessed in a British Ranger. You wouldn't get more excitement than this in a world title fight. Both guys have been bounced off the canvas like they're a basketball. It's incredible. How Spencer Fearon can let this one slip away is beyond me. It really is. All credit to David Walker. He's come out with an almighty right hand straight over the top, and he's right back in the fight. Well, just as we were wondering, would Walker manage to stave off the left hand of Fearon, and he launched a right of his own, and Fearon bounced off his corner like a rag doll. Fearon's covering up. Here comes Walker. Kid Dynamite starts to explode. Fearon looking tired. They're both on shaky legs, and you just feel the first one to land will go over. Walker gets him. Walker gets him. Lee Cook's having a good look. Walker swarming all over him. The shots are glancing off. He needs a clean one. Fearon is exhausted. That's a good one. He stopped it. Down twice within seconds of the end of round one and two, and Walker came back and looks over and says to Spencer Fair, well, you had your chance and you didn't take it, and I had my chance and I've taken it, but for drama and excitement and to and fro, well, you could not beat this contest. Absolutely amazing. David Walker down and almost out at the end of the first and again the second round had Fearon down at the end of the third, and Walker swarmed all over him. Yes, that was a hot and emotional night down there. Dave, watching it, you seem to be living, oh. living every single punch oh. again. What do you remember from the fight? I know it's exciting, and um, being in it, um, I enjoyed it. You know, I'm just so thank God that I won the fight. You know, and uh, <laughs> I was caught real on the end of the round, and if Lee Cook stopped the fight, I couldn't have argued with you. You know, couldn't have argued with no the way. ref had stopped it, um, either, yeah. either, either time or just the first time. Do you know what? The second time was work, uh, hurt me more, you know, but Robert oh. said, I'm your mate, I'm your... And I, Robert knew I was fit, and I trained after that fight, so he knew I was in I was good hands, and he knew I could Could you sense that, that Fearon was tiring? He was tiring, yeah, yeah and I knew I'd get to him, you know. I was, I was knocking a lot of boys out like a punch, you know. I knew I'd get to him, you know. I knew he was tiring, I knew he'd 
blew his gasket in them two rounds. He come in swinging, swinging. I thought, just take my time, and I knew I had him. The next, I had him then, you know, that round. I was clear headed, I was very fit. I trained hard with Robert and Cole and all the boys over Hackney, you know. So I. No, yeah. Yeah, well, you, you had that whole thing going there, that whole yeah. Mick Hennessy thing, you know, the yeah. class of whatever it was yeah. called, and, and you Mick did some great posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Watch was part That's of it. Right, yeah. Obviously, yourself, you were part yeah. of it. There was uh, Lee. There was about, how many of you? About yeah. seven, yeah, six. Farewell, great fight for the fish. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. the yeah. and you also, you actually people sort of need to understand that you all sort of live basically over at the old Lennox yeah. Lewis College during That's the right, week yeah. and That's what I see, and yeah. with Rob was there and Mick was there yeah. and it was a, it was a, it was an incredible team spirit for a few years there. It was good, yeah. I think Robert kept me there because he heard me rumours that I was going out, you know, partying a bit and. Was all true? That was Fergal. I tell you what, Mammy and Matthew really had a bad name for that, you know. And I mm. really we had a good name for it, depends yeah, how you look at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we had some good times over the Hackney. We used to run together and everything, but I was just trying to slip out there and go home, you know what I mean? But it got a bit boring after a while, but Cole, dedicated as he was, and stuck there and look how well he's done. But it was great days, you know. And we've, I'm friends with Robert and Mick, and we're all good friends, you know. I see Matthew a lot. Yeah, they're not friends, but you're friends nah, with them. I'm, I've not fallen out of no one. I try not to, but. I don't know what's going on there, but... Um, Just before we're going to move, we've got some... I want to keep you here, Dave. There's plenty yeah. I want to talk to you about, but uh, tell me about when you first used to see Carl Froch and being around Carl in the gym. Did you know he was going to go on to become the, you know, the super hard man that he is now? Do you know what? I was in the ABAs with him. I think I boxed in the ABAs. I won it in 98. I think we was in it together one year. And um, he seemed a bit... No, not real confident. I was looking at him. I thought, I'll be I thought I was boxing, but obviously I wasn't, but... Uh, uh, I think he's so dedicated. Robert used to tell me he's a world champion. And whatever, yeah, well, they, they, what, they both did from the start. Whatever Robert said, I, I believe. And um, he was so dedicated, Cole. He deserves how well he's done. He's so dedicated. We go out for Chinese sometimes and mess about and have a laugh. And Robert, he'd stay there, Cole. And um, well, he was so dedicated, you know. And I remember, I remember what, funny you should say one Chinese, you'll love this yeah. story, Barry. Yeah. We went out for Chinese oh, in Liverpool yeah. oh. and, and, Dave's, and Dave's cousin was there. Steve, yeah. right? I'm not going to go yeah. into it, but let's just say yeah. that we had a big table full yeah. of lots of dishes and his cousin produced an extra dish yeah. with a ring in yeah. it. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was the wildest. We did have some fun times, I hear that. And, that, and, and, that's, and that's what worked with those guys, yeah. that, that kind of community. Because yeah. you didn't have anything like that when you turned pro, did you? No. You weren't part of a... a Group of ten. We were mm. talking back backstage that we were talking me and David about, you know, the, the, how much we enjoyed the amateurs oh, because right. it was a it was like a, a team environment and, yeah. and you seemed you had that a little oh, bit with, great, the, amateurs, but with the, the guys. They, they, pro. they had it more. They, yeah. they, those guys yeah. all turned pro and they joined a club that was stronger That's and more true. and more un, united yeah. than any amateur club. It was a tight knit. We was all friends and we were all very close. You know, box together. We all spurred each other on and it was great days. You know, running over Hackney. Hackney Marshes and staying with Rob and we'd all have a laugh and joke and the banter and play up games with each other. It's great, do you know what I mean? It's unbelievable, really. We're going to talk a little bit about your boxing for England and one of the men that inspired you on yeah. one of those trips and what you do yeah. for him yeah. in a minute. But I'm just going to go, if I can now, to Bolton. We're going to go, go to Bolton because earlier on today, Amir Khan and Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter's been over for a couple of weeks with Amir Khan. We, some of us, thought maybe the relationship was over. No, it seems solid as ever. Anyway, today up in Bolton at Amir's gym, which is a community gym, it's cost him nearly a million quid to keep that open. And no one ever pats him on the back for that, but we like to do it on this show as often as possible. Amir announced that he's going to be fighting.